Good morning, ESM. I'm Elena. And I'm Kyra. And as many of you know, the holidays are quickly approaching this year. Of, as many of us are busy wrapping gifts and trimming the tree, a large portion of the world doesn't celebrate this holiday, doesn't celebrate Christmas because of culture or religion. Mm -hmm. After news, we'll talk more about those who don't celebrate Christmas and talk about some of their traditions and ways they might celebrate Christmas instead. Last Tuesday, Bronislaw Wegos, who was a survivor from a Nazi labor camp, had passed away after having the coronavirus for only nine days. He was tested positive the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Bronislaw, or known by his nickname Brownie, was known to be a hardworking man who was kind and saw the good in people. After being in the Nazi labor camp in Germany during World War II, he immigrated to the U.S. with his wife Genevieve and his two daughters. They first settled in Fulton, but then moved to Oswego, where he had passed. Wegels will have a burial this morning at the Sacred Heart Cemetery in Lakeland. The U.S. government agencies were ordered to clean their networks and disconnect possible compromised servers after finding out that the Treasury and Commerce Departments were hacked yesterday. Um, the hacked cyber study company, the FireEye, wouldn't say who it suspected. This has led to the belief that the operation was because of Russia. Furthermore, other foreign governments and businesses were also compromised. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today we will have a 20% chance of snow showers with a high of 38 and a low of 23. And tomorrow it will be colder and it's our coldest day of the week with sun and clouds. Wednesday will be around the same temperature as Tuesday but a little warmer with a 40% chance of light p.m. snow. Thursday will be staying around the same temperatures as Wednesday with a 20% chance of a.m. showers. Friday will be the same sun and clouds, well, well, sorry, will be the same with sun and clouds. And Saturday will be warmer than Friday with some sun. Sunday is wrapping up the week with a 90% chance of snow, and I'm Grayson with your weather. So as we said earlier, there are others that don't celebrate the holiday season, and one group that's known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. As one of Jehovah's Witnesses myself, there are definitely a bunch of reasons why we don't celebrate Christmas. Um, one big reason is because of its pagan origins. Um, we don't celebrate birthdays for the same reason, and Christmas is supposed to celebrate Jesus' birth, right? So it's basically a two-for-one. Um, in fact, early Christians didn't even celebrate Christmas because they considered the celebration of anyone's birth, even Jesus's, to be a pagan custom. I found that very cool because I never even knew that, like that was a type of religion. Mm -hmm. Even Christmas lights, which I do admit can be pretty cool to look at, um, originated with the custom that Europeans would decorate their homes with lights and evergreens of all kinds, which is today's traditional Christmas tree, to celebrate the winter solstice and to combat evil spirits. And evil spirits, referring to demonistic beings, is something Ashova's witnesses strive to stay as far away from as possible. There are many more reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas along with many other religions and cultures. Christmas time is a joyous holiday for 92% of Americans that celebrate it. Although Christmas is traditionally a Christian holiday, 81% of non-Christians celebrate it. This includes the majority of Buddhists and Hindus, but only a third of Jews celebrate and even fewer American Muslims celebrate. As many people appreciate, mostly everyone gets time off for Christmas. However, how does that fare for the minorities in the United States? Rabbi Paul Drazen celebrates Hanukkah with his temple in Syracuse. Well, we live in a, in a society that is majority Christian, or at least say they are Christian. Um, so that's just one of the things that happens when you're in a minority. Uh, you learn to live with it. You celebrate the, uh, the holidays of the people who celebrate Christmas. Uh, and you spend a lot of time explaining why we don't and that not everybody does. ESM has many students that do not celebrate Christmas. While it does bring the school some diversity, many students are left out while the hype is building for Christmas. 
However, it can inspire some others to at least celebrate the commercialism of it. Safet and Rhonda are ESM students that do not celebrate Christmas. Yeah, I have a lot of friends who talk about Christmas because they celebrate Christmas, but I don't really mind. Like, I'm happy, like, if, they're, if they celebrate it, then I respect that, and I'm happy for them. It doesn't bother me at all. Because, like, the lights, I really like, I enjoy the lights when I see them outside. It doesn't really bother me. I think it's very festive, very nice. It looks really pretty. Um, there's actually a tree in downtown, right? Yeah, and, um, like, every time we pass by it, it's like my eyes, I can't get off of the tree. <laughs> Christmas has become a very commercialized holiday, as it focuses more on trees, gifts, and Santa. Very few know the history of Christmas, and even fewer celebrate it. I think presently we've become too commercialized with Christmas. I think that's evident that stores are open on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one of the few American holidays that we all celebrate, and it should be a time to be just with family, and opening stores and forcing people to work takes part of that away and that's all as a result of the commercialism of Christmas. Some holidays were even formed to combat this commercialism. Dan O'Keefe, a writer for Seinfeld, brought this into the show after Festivus was created by his father. Festivus was a holiday created in 1966 to boycott the commercialism of other holidays like Hanukkah and Christmas. And uh, later on it was brought, like, resurrected into the episode The Strike, uh, which was a Seinfeld episode that aired in the 90s. However, no matter what religion you believe, ESM does report that you may take religious holidays off from school so you can spend the day celebrating. And as Rabbi Paul Drazen says, if someone wishes you a Merry Christmas, just say thank you. Syracuse basketball defeated Boston College Saturday 101-63. Buddy Beheim returned for the first time for the first game since being quarantined due to COVID-19. It's reported that they will be a game added midweek versus Northeastern, so look out for that. A regularly scheduled game is to be played Saturday against Buffalo. Vanderbilt kicker Sarah Fuller became the first woman to score in a Power 5 college football game. She scored the extra point after the team's touchdown. She later tweeted out that it was all due to her lucky socks. The Philadelphia Eagles upset the New Orleans Saints 24-21. Eagles rookie quarterback Jalen Hurts, who replaced Carson Wentz, threw for 167 yards and one touchdown, and rushed for 102 yards as well. Running back Miles Sanders also ran for 115 yards and two touchdowns. One of those runs was an 82-yard touchdown run. The Buffalo Bills beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 26-15, and the Steelers are now on a two-game losing streak. Bills receiver Stephon Diggs had a great game with 130 yards and a touchdown. Bills defense played great too with a sack and two interceptions. One returned for a touchdown by cornerback Taron Johnson. Tonight, the Cleveland Browns play against the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm John, we sports. Two months that we especially celebrate with Joe and happiness is Deshaun and Lily. Um, Deshaun is all about getting together with family and the living of God. mostly like we like throw colors around and enjoy the good moments out there. Do you have like specific food when you do it? Um, for the shine we have multiple food. We have samosas, dumplings. I've had those are good. <laughs> I've had those before. Um, we've had we have um, they're called roti. It's kind of it looks like a donut, but it's circled. Is it sweet? Yeah, it's kind of sweet. It's like both features. We have, um, there's like a lot. It's hard to like think of them. And holy, we have like mostly like out, outdoor foods. Like we go to like Nepali restaurant like stores and buy food after those and stuff like that. So what kind of foods do you have for holy? Like do you have a favorite food? Um, we have sweets. We have something called laddu. It's really like, it's really like, it's like, a circle of shape. It's yellow and different colors. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. And we have jalebi. It's orangish and like we keep like you know a spiral. We make it into like a spiral. Is it, it like a donut? No, it doesn't. It's like it's like a spiral, but it doesn't end up like a spiral because there's a lot of mistakes and mess ups. Mm -hmm. But I think those are my favorite. 
And do you have like any other traditions you guys do? Oh, we have a lot of traditions. Um, we have Diwali. It's the festival that we celebrate before Brother's Day. So it's all about the cult of the festival of lights. Um, we light up candles. Um, we celebrate the living of God. And we, it's five days of Diwali. And then after the five days, it's Brother's Day. But this year, there's only two days. And what's that? Like, what month is that in? That month? Um, I think, yeah, it just passed. It was in November. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Ankita, for sitting down with me for this interview. And that's all we have for you guys about our show. And I'm happy to share our festivals. Well, we hope you learned something from today's show. From me, Elena, and everyone here at the morning show, have a great day.